Hey guys, it's Dorian here. Welcome back. I hope all of you are having yourself a great day. Today, I'm going to be diving in back to the original Xbox console. In case you missed it, Insignia is a free Xbox Live replacement service for the original Xbox console, allowing gamers to once again experience the thrill of online multiplayer on their favorite classic Xbox titles. With Insignia's efforts, we can look forward to reliving the golden age of Xbox Live and reconnecting with the gaming community that made it so special. Since November of 2022, the team at Insignia made the service available to the public, and it's been rolling out lots of games since then. In fact, as of this recording, there are 113 games supported. I will link in the description where you can learn more about Insignia and its Discord. Many players on there organize games on a weekly basis, and it's quite enjoyable to participate in these events. And today, I'm going to dive in my top 10 favorite games you can play online on your original Xbox console. So buckle up and let's get started. Number 10, X-Men Legends 2, Rise of Apocalypse. <laughs> nice trick. What do you do for an encore? If you've ever dreamed that you wanted to have your ultimate X-Men team and X-Men villain team up, well here you go. X-Men Legends 2 Rise of Apocalypse delivers that. Of course you could play as Wolverine, you got your classic Storm, Rogue, Nightcrawler, Juggernaut, Jean Grey, just to name some. And in fact there are some bonus characters that uh, I haven't listed but definitely you can look and unlock on your own. This game supports up to four players and local co-op so all on the same television or you can play online co-op where my brother and I are doing this right now. Up to four players which is pretty darn cool. This is an action RPG so you got that kind of a bird's eye view perspective. You got simple button presses to do melee attacks, cast your spells or specials. It's a quite a fun game. If you're familiar with dungeon crawlers things like Diablo, Baldur's Gate, then you'll be right at home with X-Men Legends. There's not a whole lot too much to think about, you just grab a controller and play and it's quite enjoyable. I personally haven't beaten this game to 100% just yet, but from the taste I have, it has been a great experience so far. It's hard to qualify my exact thrill I have with teaming up with my brother in this game or with randoms, but the thrill is indeed real, long lasting and great. It's a game that I highly recommend you check out if you have an original Xbox and signed up with Insignia. And once again, Insignia is a free Xbox Live replacement for the original Xbox console. Get in there! Number 9. Marvel Ultimate Alliance <laughs> That dude scares me. You wanna get tough, punk? Good! So do I. Avengers, assemble! We just got done talking about X-Men Legends 2 Rise of Apocalypse. Well, if you want to up the ante, here you have it, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Building off the success of X-Men Legends 2 Rise of Apocalypse, with the game supporting 4 players, local co-op and online co-op, with the abundant character roster, there is no shortage of who you want to play as. You expect to see Wolverine, Spider-Man, Captain America, Iron Man, Doctor Strange, then this goes on and on, Daredevil. These are some awesome iconic Marvel characters and you can play them all at once with a friend or local co-op. I have personally have beaten this game twice, once on the PlayStation 3 and once on the PlayStation 2, but this is currently my first playthrough and playing it online for the first time, and I gotta say, I'm having a wonderful time. As I stated in X-Men Legends 2 Rise of the Apocalypse, there's just something special about playing this game in online co-op with my brother. It just brings back a, a simple time when we were just kids playing games on the local screen, but able to play this online, it is a fantastic addition to the Insignia Library. Again, if you like your dungeon crawling games, action role playing games, and expansive roster from Marvel Comics, this game is for you. Oh, and let me not forget, 
The story in Marvel Ultimate Alliance is a great one. You need to play it. There are some really interesting twists and lore. It's worth every minute to put in. And this game is definitely in my top 10, coming at number 9, a game that everyone must play at one point or another. If it's just even story, local co-op, or online co-op with Insignia, it's a great game. Number 8. Return to Castle Wolfenstein, Tides of War. If you're looking for a World War II-esque alternative history, look no further in Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Right off the bat, when you get into a full match in online, it is quite chaotic but fun. There are different classes that you can play as. You can play as the soldier class, which is the standard infantry for both the allies and the access teams. You can also play as the engineer, as these guys are the demolition experts, only ones capable of using dynamite to destroy objects and obstacles. You then have the standard medic class, which are quite important supporting class, help replenish your teammates and revive fallen comrades on the battlefield. This will certainly help turn the tide when things get spicy in the action. And lastly, the lieutenant class. The lieutenants provide ammo for teammates and carry a long range radio for calling in airstrikes and artillery bombardments. In my experience in Return to Castle Wolfenstein, my go-to class is the medic as I see to be helping out my teammates more often than not and my second go-to class is the engineer. You will come across maps and levels where you're required to destroy big walls and obstacles to proceed and help your team. There are actually four different game types you can play. You have objective based modes where the Axis and Allied teams have specific objectives that to complete within a certain time limit. You have Stopwatch. This is a mode similar to objective but with a twist. After every round, the team switch sides and have to beat the other team's time before the previous round. Another mode is Checkpoint where you have two teams battle for control over checkpoint flags in several areas of the map. The first team to simultaneously control every checkpoint flag or the team that has the most flags when the time expires wins. Lastly, you have elimination mode. This is just pure classic team deathmatch. Especially the mode objective, that is one of the modes that I find beneficial in having a voice communicator. In my estimation, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, the controls, the feel, and overall well-being of this game, it's a lot of fun and I highly recommend. And that is why it's number 8 on my list of games to be played on Insignia. Number 7, Project Gotham Racing 2. Rev up your engines! If you're looking to cure that itch of online racing games, Look no further than Project Gotham Racing 2. If you're interested in exotic and authentic cars like the Ferrari Enzo, then this game is for you. The game has an arcade-like feel, but at the same time there is a bit of satisfaction of simulation. I really think that this game has done a great job in its audio capturing, especially for the time when this game came out in 2003. Project Gotham Racing 2 offers the ability to play with up to 7 other players. You can choose race types from like Exhibition or Kudos, turn collisions on or off, set the city, route, laps, time of day, weather. It's pretty darn cool, there's a lot of neat options available. This is one of the most active titles that have been released on Insignia. Almost on a daily basis you can find full game lobbies to join, which are quite enjoyable. I'm glad I was able to participate in the last one. With all these amazing racers from all across the globe able to replay a classic game like Project Gotham 2, it is quite a fun time to revisit. If you like racing games, you like your original Xbox, and you want to check out online gaming, at number 7, Project Gotham Racing 2 quite possibly be the finest racing title that you can play on Insignia. So buckle up, get ready for a fun ride revisiting the original Xbox console. Number 6, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six 3. Do any of you guys remember the days where you just gotta take things a little bit more slow, tactical approach? In fact, we can call it a methodical approach. Rainbow Six Three was one of the most popular original Xbox Live games back in the mid-2000s. If you want to jump into some 
PvP action with 15 other opponents. It is one of the most action-packed gameplay you will expect and see on Xbox Live Insignia. It is a much more of a tactical approach but still enjoyable and when the action ramps up, things can get quite spicy. If playing against other players is not your cup of tea, don't worry. There's also online co-op that you can play through other missions together with your teammates. In fact, you can play through the whole story in online co-op as there are some missions there and you can play through terrorist hunt where you actually go ahead and hunt down terrorists in each map. I would say this is one of the most important games if you have a headset. It is a game changer knowing where enemies are, knowing where to defuse and plant the bombs. It's one of those games that rely on instant and important communication. If there's no communication between you and your teammates, you will be at a disadvantage immediately. All in all, if you're looking for a fun, tactical, methodical shooter, look no further in Rainbow Six Three. And that is why it is number six on my list of games to play on your original Xbox and enjoy the online through Insignia. Number five, Star Wars Battlefront Two. If you're looking for a third person or first person shooter, look no further in Star Wars Battlefront 2 on the original Xbox. With up to 32 players in one lobby, get ready for some of the best Star Wars action and adventure you'll see on the original Xbox console. Some of my favorite features are you can fight as a Jedi or Sith Lord. It is super overpowering, but at the same time, it is quite satisfying when you're just racking up those eliminations on the leaderboards. You also are able to battle in space, going from one big ship to another, setting explosives on shield generators for the big ships, d disabling certain turrets, and disabling other defensive and offensive maneuvers for their ship. You also can get into some fun dogfight action as X-Wings, TIE Fighters, Jedi Starfighters, and other classical starships. If you are a Star Wars fan and have an original Xbox, this is the Star Wars game to play online through Insignia. And with its variety of different gameplay modes, it is no shortage of fun. Get in there while it's hot. And that is why it's number 5 on my list of must plays for online gameplay for the Insignia, the Xbox Live Revival. Number 4, Unreal Championship. Double kill, multi-kill, mega kill. With up to 16 players in one match, there is no shortage of fun in this game. If you're looking for some high octane, unrivaled, unprecedented first person shooter, look no further in Unreal Championship on the original Xbox. With a variety of different weapons like missile launchers, frag grenades, grenade launchers, rocket launchers, there's no shortage of arsenal in your weaponry. This is one of the fastest running games on your original Xbox that you can enjoy today. There are a variety of different game types and player modes. To start off you have your classic deathmatch, team deathmatch, capture the flag, double domination, survival, and bombing run. When you play Unreal Championship you'll find all sorts of different health pickups, perks, mutators, and weapons all across the map. If you're looking for a first person arena shooter, look no further in Unreal Championship. That is why it's number 4 on my list on the original Xbox games we played for Insignia. Number 3, Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. With up to 8 players in one game session, Tony Hawk American Wasteland does not shy away from its game modes. One of my favorite parts of Tony Hawk American Wasteland Online is that you can take your own character that you created and bring it online for others to see. With a variety of different game modes like Trick Attack, Score Challenge, Graffiti, Elimination, Capture the Flag, and Pot of Gold, there is no shortage of gameplay and an entertainment here. If you've been itching to get back on the skateboard and revisit some Tony Hawk on your original Xbox, this is the one to check out. Tony Hawk American Wasteland Online through Insignia is a wonderful and blastful time, so strap on your helmet, your padding, and get ready for a good time with your 50-50 grinds on Tony Hawk American Wasteland.
Before I get into my last two video games, I want to throw out some honorable mentions. You got Doom 3. Fantasy Star Online. Crimson Skies. Dark Watch. You have taken the lead. Midnight Club 2. America's Army. Hold still. And lastly, Brothers in Arms, Road to Hill 30. Let's give it all we got. Number 2. ESPN NFL Football 2K4. Blue 58, Blue 58, Hot Route, Green 19, Green 19, Hut Hut. ESPN NFL Football 2K4. This is a classic NFL game and it's back online. In my opinion, we haven't seen NFL football at its best since the mid 2000s. Games like NFL 2K4, NFL 2K5, Madden 2004, Madden 2005, even Madden 2006, many of these games on the original Xbox and PlayStation 2. ESPN NFL 2K4's gameplay, the sound, the graphics, the animations, and just overall feel and NFL audience and atmosphere is unprecedented and holds up quite well in the year 2023. For online options, you have your classic 1v1 in unranked and ranked matches and first-person football. I want to say that we haven't seen a first-person football game since 2K4 and 2K5. As a whole package, I do think that NFL 2K4 is a better game than the current iterations of Madden, especially in the last 10 years. With the 2023 NFL football season quickly approaching, there's no better time to dive back into ESPN NFL Football 2K4 on your original Xbox and play it online through Insignia. And that's why I put ESPN NFL Football 2K4 as my number two favorite game to be played on Insignia. Let's watch this again. Yep, it's just a little bit to the side of the upright, but both only counts in horseshoe. And number one. It is Tom Clancy, Splinter Cell, Pandora, Tomorrow. The Spies vs. Mercenaries mode is a multiplayer mode that first debuted in Pandora, Tomorrow. This game involves stealth-focused characters like the Spies and the action-based characters as the Mercenaries. Both of these teams are opposing each other. The Spies have no lethal weapons and rely on vertical navigation, the shadows, night vision and thermal vision goggles, and their smarts. On the other hand, the mercenaries have heavy weaponry, they have different vision modes, and they have their own set of gadgets and tools, but also need to play intelligent. The spies are tasked with infiltrating and completing specific objectives, while the mercenaries must defend the objective and eliminate the spies. This gameplay emphasizes stealth, strategy and teamwork, with the spies relying on their agility and gadgets while the mercenaries focus on firepower and surveillance. This is one of the most important games to have a voice communicator. I emphasize this because if you do not have a microphone or a teammate doesn't have a microphone, you are at a complete disadvantage. In real time, the spies or the mercenaries, when you're in a heated battle moment or you're trying to find out where the objective is, Having a communication with your teammate is vital for survival and success. I have many fond memories of the spies versus mercenaries. The moments when you are at three or four seconds right before you're ending a hack to only get blown up with only maybe one or two lives between you and your teammate. Things get real intense. 
map knowledge is crucial as well. If you're not sure as a spy where the objectives are, and same goes as a mercenary, it can be quite difficult. So I highly recommend checking out the explore a map feature so you can learn where the things are and how the game modes work. One of my favorite gameplay moments is as a spy, you get behind a mercenary, grab them by the neck, and then you press the white button. While you have that button pressed, you can talk to the mercenary, give them some trash talk, and then snap their neck. It is truly a fun experience. See if we can get the neck. Oh, oh, uh. hello there. Are you able to hear me? Hello, hello? Yeah. Nice, oh man. Nice job. And uh, snapping necks and cashing checks. I will say this. It is an experience like no other. Either you're playing as a spy in third person, trying to remain undetected, hack terminals with being quick, agile, and deadly in the shadows, or you're the mercenary in first person mode and using brute force with unmatched weaponry who's trying to defend the data from the infiltrators. In my estimation, there hasn't been a game that's captured the captivating, thrilling, and exciting feel of Spies vs. Mercenaries since the mid-2000s. Maybe we'll see a change in that in the years to come, but this is a game you must play on Insignia. And that's why Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow Spies vs. Mercs is my number one best game that you can play on Insignia. And there you have it, my top 10 original Xbox games that you can play online in the year 2023. And with that top 10, please let me know in the comment section, what does your top 10 look like? Is it similar? Is it completely off? Let me know and I'll respond. I must say a big shout out and thank you at the folks over at Insignia. The team there has been phenomenal and they've been pumping out amazing games. Again, there's currently 113 games ready to be played with all different genres readily available. I will have all the information and links in the description down below. I can't wait to see what's next on the list of games. My fingers are crossed. I would love to see Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Not only is the Spy vs. Mercenaries mode refreshing and fun, but I'm looking forward to the online co-op story as the two rookie Splinter Cell agents, the blue and the red agent. Let me know down below, what are some Xbox Live games you're looking forward to seeing being revived? I know the team at Insignia has a goal in mind that they want to revive every single Xbox Live enabled title. And I'm sure there's the big elephant in the room regarding Halo 2. Halo 2 is on the list of being revived, but we don't know when that will come just yet. But rest assured, the team at Insignia is working on that. With that said, thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, by all means, feel free to subscribe as I do like to keep up to date with things regarding Insignia and its online revival for the Xbox. And that is going to do it for today. Until next time, have yourself a great day.